This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're still on the uh, management of working capital section of the uh, exam, uh, and we're now going to look at chapter five of the free lecture notes: the management of receivables and payables. Uh, but first of all, and more importantly, the management of receivables. Uh, first of all, let me have. Uh, and a fairly short chat before we start looking at the arithmetic, because do appreciate F9, only 50% of the exam will be arithmetic. So you have to make sure you understand what's going on. I've already said in one of the earlier lectures that we want to, to keep receivables as low as possible. We want to collect in receivables, collect in the money as fast as we can. Uh, I think that's common sense. We acknowledge we have to give credit because if our competitors give credit, if our competitors and our customers a month's credit, we're rather forced to. But the faster we can collect in the money, the better. And as I said, before we come to um, calculations, do be aware of different things we should consider when we're, as financial manager, setting up uh, a system of managing receivables. Um, I've put it there, points to consider as parts of efficient management. Halfway down the first page. Uh, proper credit checks and credit limits. You know, before you sell to customers on credit, check first uh, that obviously that there's a good chance they will pay us and that they'll pay us efficiently. Set credit limits. If somebody, for, uh, the first time a customer comes to you, set a fairly low limit. You know, perhaps they can buy up to 500 on credit. And when they've proved that they're a good payer and that they pay on time, then perhaps you'll review it and you'll increase the credit limit. Uh, and let them buy more on credit. Um, credit terms, settlement discounts. Um, <laughs> they seem too obvious. But print on uh, the invoices what the credit terms are, you know, payable within 30 days or whatever. That doesn't make them pay within 30 days, but there's more chance they will than if you didn't bother telling them. Uh, offer them discounts for early payment. Pay within 20 days, you can have a 1% discount. They may not pay early, but clearly the uh, chance of a discount would encourage them to pay early. Over the page, collection procedures. Again, this may seem terribly obvious, but you know, I have standard policies laying down that, um, oh, we give them 30 days credit. If they haven't paid in 30 days, we send them a statement to remind them. If that doesn't work, then after 40 days, we ring them. After 50 days, perhaps we get lawyers involved. We you know, have a standard policies and keep checking, you know, how old are each of our receivables. Uh, D, charge interest on overdue invoices. Now, this is harder to achieve. Um, pay within 30 days, otherwise I'll charge you 5% interest. Mm. They probably pay 40 days and don't pay the interest, and you're not going to take them to court for it. Although certainly companies supplying services can achieve this. Mobile phone operators, for instance. You know, if you do, if they wanted to charge interest because you were late paying, and if you didn't pay it, then of course they can cut off the service, which rather forces you to. Anyway, those are all general points to consider, and make sure you can write about them. Um, the second thing, before we do come to arithmetic, is be clear what we mean by invoice discounting and factoring. Uh, because people confuse them and they are two different things. What invoice discounting is, is where you sell an invoice to the bank. Now, 
what we're getting at here. Suppose uh, I've got receivables of 100,000, and included there is one customer who owes me 10,000. My terms are in 30 days, and I'm confident he's going to pay me in 30 days. But, for whatever reason, we desperately need some short-term money today. We've got a big expense today, and I need some cash. Uh, I could ring up the customer and explain and say, could you possibly pay earlier? Mm -hmm. But another thing you can do as a way of getting the cash would be to take that invoice to the bank and effectively they would lend you money on the invoice. Effectively, I sell the invoice to the bank so when the customer pays, the bank gets the 10000 but the bank gives me money today. Now, the bank's going to have to wait a month to get the 10000 so they won't give me a full 10,000. They'll take off a little bit, effectively interest. You know, they may they may give me 9,900, but I'll get 9,900 today, rather than have to wait a month to get 10,000 from the um, customer. Uh, so that's why it's called invoice discounting, because the amount the bank will give you today will be a bit less than the amount of the invoice that's due. Now that's discounting, that's a way of getting, um, effectively borrowing money. Now the other though, factoring, which you might well have heard of, but be clear about the different levels of factoring. Factoring is essentially when you pay someone else, usually a company, pay another company to collect our receivables. And the other company is called a factor. And the reason you might do that, as particularly for small medium companies, why we might do this, uh, is um, that they're much better at it. You know, their job is to collect uh, receivables. That's their business. And so they're perhaps more efficient at it than I would be. And so there's more chance of them getting the money and getting it in sooner. Uh, and also, uh, again, why it's particularly worth considering for a small company, is rather than me having to employ people to start chasing receivables, you know, have to pay salaries and so on, uh, I don't need to have my own department. I pay this other company to do it for me. So that's the basic service a factor provides, and obviously they charge a fee. However, they will offer, normally, extra services. And one extra for an extra fee Uh, they'll give me some of the money in advance. Give payments in advance. So what, uh, the sort of thing I mean, maybe I invoice 10,000 a month. As soon as I invoice, I give the invoices to the factor because they've got copies of them because they're going to then collect the money. But maybe the factor gives us 20% of the money immediately and the other 80% uh, when it's collected from the customer. So effectively they are lending us money and they'll charge for it. The extra fee is interest. But, again, we'll look at numbers on this uh, later, but it could be worth paying effectively interest to the factor in order to get some of the money in a lot faster than we otherwise would. The other extra service, again, for an extra fee,
is something called non-recourse factoring. Uh, and do learn the word, it's been used uh, quite a few times in the exam. And what non-recourse factoring is, is that the factor guarantees there'll be no irrecoverable debts, no bad debts. That the factor guarantees we'll get the full amount uh, of the invoices, guarantee no Uh, bad or irrecoverable is the new word, irrecoverable debts. So in a sense, I mean the charge for this, so in a sense it's like taking insurance. Maybe at the moment, oh, on average 3% of my receivables never pay. Use the factor and pay the extra fee and they'll guarantee that we get payment in full. If, a, if there is a customer who doesn't pay, the factor uh, stands the loss. Uh, obviously, the factor who uh, may want to check who we're selling to, uh, otherwise I'll sell to all my friends and tell them not to bother paying, but uh, well, that sounds stupid. But it's, it's a bit like taking insurance. And that can be a benefit, you see, if at the moment I have a lot of irrecoverable debts, depending on how much the factor's charging for this service, could save me money. Okay, so that's the chat bit. Uh, in the next lecture, I'll start going through the arithmetic that you get asked, uh, and it's to do primarily with offering discounts. Uh, I mentioned earlier one way of trying to get money in earlier is to offer a discount, but we need to consider, you know, whether it's actually worth it. You're not going to offer a 20% discount. Uh, you know, what, how much would be worth offering? Anyway, I'll go through that in the next lecture.